The Mustard Seed Media video podcast is sponsored and created by Mustard Seed Media Inc., creating and developing media and web for tomorrow's Christian ministries. On the web at mustardseedmedia.com. Okay, so let's open up Drupal.org and let's do a little CMS magic. Okay, so let's start with this Photoshop document here and let's turn this thing into a website right down to it and edit some CSS, shall we? Welcome to yet another episode of the Mustard Seed Media Video Podcast. My name is Bob and I'm your host. This is the podcast where we talk about stuff about web design. That wasn't a very good sentence. We talk about stuff about web design, such as uh, CSS, HTML, uh, we talk about Drupal. We talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, today's episode is on CSS sprites. Uh, it's a technique that's used to uh, do hover images. So if you uh, you have a uh, a nice image that you're using as a as a link, when you hover over it, the image changes. Uh, we're going to show you how to do it in a very cool way. Uh, let's start by looking at the Apple website. No, we're not going to talk about the iPhone 3G, although it launched today. Uh, instead, we're going to look up here at their menu. I don't know if you've ever thought about how they do their menu or if you've ever looked, uh, but basically uh, this is an image-driven menu. So these are uh, just images. Uh, and then when you roll over, uh, the image changes uh, to a different image. Uh, the key here uh, that makes it the sprite technique though uh, is that this is actually all the same image. These, these rollovers are the same image uh, as the not rollover part. Uh, so let's use Firebug and go ahead and inspect that uh, those images that are being used. And if we look at it, we will notice it's all actually one image. Uh, what happens is it, it initially loads this just this top bar uh, to do uh, to basically show right on page load. And then when you hover, all it's doing is it's uh, changing uh, it's sort of changing the view by moving part of that image up into the display area. Uh, and same with click, it would it would take this and it would move it up. Uh, so you saw the part of the image that looked like this. Uh, there's a couple different reasons to do this. Uh, the first is uh, for preloading issues. Uh, a lot of times if you've ever tried to do a button like this and you use two separate images, so say uh, this here was an image and then this here was a second separate image, uh, you would notice when you hovered over, unless you did some JavaScript or you did some other stuff to fix it, uh, basically you'd have a little bit of a delay uh, because that image, that second image, isn't preloaded. By making it uh, all the same image, what happens is when this, when the page originally loads and it shows this top menu bar, uh, that means that it's also loading all of the hover and the click and all the other states uh, that are going to be used uh, in that CSS. So there's going to be no delay, there's no preloader issues. Uh, the other reason to do this is just server access times. The more images you have, uh, the more times it has to go back and access the server, uh, and that's bad. Uh, it's going to slow down uh, performance and stuff like that. Uh, so Apple's just one site that uses this. Uh, there's lots and lots of others. Uh, let's look at how to do it. First thing I'm going to do is just create a piece of content. All I'm going to do is create a link, uh, a text link here. Uh, and I'm doing it in Drupal, but you can do it uh, anywhere. And I, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div with a class, a button. Uh, you can call that class whatever you want. Uh, and then inside, I'm going to put a link. And then I'm just going to put some text. Close my link, close my div, save it, and we're good to go. Now what we've got here is just a link that says click me. Just text link, whatever. Uh, so let's create, let's go ahead now and we're going to create uh, the image that's going to replace this, uh, our sprite image. I'm going to fire up Photoshop. I'm going to create a, uh, a new button size or a new new canvas size here with a width of 200 and a height of 100 and uh, that's going to be my button. So the very first thing I'm going to do, uh, I, I'm going to make a button that's just going to have two states. It'll have a regular state and a hover state. Uh, so I basically want to think of this in, uh, if you remember the Apple image, I want to think of it in terms of uh, sort of different states uh, stacked from top to bottom. Uh, so since I'm only going to have two, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, to grab a guide and put that guide right in the middle. And what that guide right in the middle is going to tell me is this top half is going to be my top uh, state and this bottom half is going to be my bottom state. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to create a button here. Uh, and uh, on that button, I'm going to put a little bit of text that just says click me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my button 
and I'm going to duplicate it down below. I'm going to change the color to black. I'm going to copy the text. And I'm going to make it say, you've hovered. Uh, that means that you're just hovering over the button there. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Uh, so you're going to see now uh, that I've basically got two buttons. I've got my initial state, I've got my uh, second state, and they're both in the same image. So let's save these. Uh, I'm just going to save it as a GIF. And I'm going to put it in my theme folder. Uh, in my, uh, if, if you're a Drupal person, this is inside my theme folder, inside the images folder. Uh, but you can put it wherever you want as long as you can link to it from your CSS. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Uh, now the important thing to remember here is the height and the width of it. So the width of this whole thing is 200 pixels, uh, so that's good to remember. The height is 100, but that means each button's only 50. Uh, so each button's only 50 high. Those are good to remember uh, as we go back and do our code. Uh, so now the image is in place. Let's do the CSS to make this happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, my div here, I'm, going to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to look at, uh, at my div that's called button. And I want to affect the uh, A, the, the actual anchor tag, the link inside of it. And I'm going to do it for visited too, because I want it to be the same. So the first thing you have to do, uh, a lot of this is similar to episode one. If you go back and look at that, uh, you'll see a lot of the same sort of technique. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is display it as a block. Uh, that's because by default, uh, anchor tags are not blocks, they're inline. Uh, I'm going to set my overflow to hidden. This means that I'm going to set the size of my button, and then anything overflow, all those other button states are, are going to be hidden. We're not going to see them. Uh, if you don't do this, a lot of times it'll show all of your other states also. Uh, so then I'm going to set my background image to the uh, image that I just created. Make sure it doesn't repeat. Oops. Um, what else am I going to do here? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the height, and I'm actually going to set the height as zero. Uh, if you want to know the reason for that, go back again and look at episode one. Um, my width, as I remember, is 200 pixels. And then my padding top is 50 pixels. Uh, again, I'll repeat just real quick. Uh, what I'm doing with the height and the padding top here is the height being zero is getting rid of the text that I originally put in there, the HTML text. The padding top is then uh, pushing that down, uh, that, that text down so you can't see it. Um, and then the final thing I want to do here is I want to set my background position uh, to be zero, zero. Uh, so that's top and uh, top and bottom and then left and right. Uh, so if I save this in theory and I go back to my link and I shift refresh, okay, there's our image. Uh, so right now we've just replaced that. Now it's not doing anything on hover. Uh, so let's go back and we'll change the hover state now. Uh, so we're, it's going to be the button A hover. Now, like I said before, all we want to do is shift that background. We want to move that background. So all I'm going to do is change the background background position, uh, we still want it uh, zero pixels uh, left and right, but now we want to do, move it negative 50 pixels top and bottom. So now if we shift refresh and then we hover, you're going to see that our image has moved just how we wanted it to. So those are uh, CSS sprites. It's a really, really good way to do uh, CSS image rollovers. Uh, and so hopefully that's helpful. Uh, as always, you can comment on this episode, uh, ask me questions, tell me uh, you already knew that and you want me to do something different. Um, over at mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast, uh, there's comments turned on there and everything. Uh, hopefully all this is helpful. If not, it's free. What do you want? Uh, so I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Uh,